Toast. Shabbat shalom, everyone. Welcome to studymoon.com. Today is Monday, February 26th. It is the first day of unleavened bread. And for that, a lot of people are being shocked. What? What? What happened to Passover? Well, we've been telling you to keep Passover now for about a month, to plan on it, to get ready for it, and to do it. And you know, we didn't have barley. We did have barley. We were, I don't know about the barley. What do we do? And oh, everyone's worrying about that. So Randy and I have come to Israel, and we have been out looking for the barley. Now, we arrived here on Friday, and we went for a little drive. We went for a little drive on Shabbat, and we went for a big drive yesterday. And then we had to come back and turn all that stuff into information that people could digest. And so when we came back yesterday, we were tired. We went for a walk on the beach. And then we had our Shabbat, our Passover meal. And then I started to work on the video. And two o'clock in the morning, I fell asleep. And then I've been working on the video the rest of today. So to make a, you know, we can upload something real quick, or we can make a presentation turning it, turning it into an educational teaching. And so I prefer the second one so that we can avoid all the hassle and arguments and fighting and hateful things that people say because they're ignorant of what's going on. So with that, I'm not going to announce anything just yet. The video is downloading because I finished it just seconds before we went on the air. It's downloading and it has still got to be uploaded yet. Uh, to YouTube, and so I'll do that after we're done today. But because you guys are here, I'm going to give you a special little treat later. <laughs> today is the first day of unleavened bread. You are commanded to eat unleavened bread for seven days. Just look up the scripture. I don't know which one it is off the top of my head. Eat unleavened bread for seven days. Leviticus 23, somewhere. Today is Yeshua's in the grave. It's the first day. The apostles are waking up. The Marys are waking up. Lazarus is waking up. And they're all trying to figure out what just happened. He's dead. He's not the Messiah because he's not coming back to life. He's dead. What do we do? So that is a test of their faith. Their faith was being tested. What did Peter do? He went back fishing. Or did he? I think I got that mixed up with after later. Where's your faith? in all of this. We're being tested. Our faith is being tested this year on Passover. I've got something I want to read you. I'll save that for this afternoon, though. We're going to read the Exodus account today, and we're going to go through, we're going to start in chapter 4, and we're going to go through the chapter 13. Before we start, though, um, Kurt is going to do the opening prayer. If I can get my mic to work. Jehovah, Father, Creator, Giver of Life and King of the Universe, you are our Yeshua. And we thank you for that. Father, this is an important time. It's really important now with everything being so strange with the barley and everything. There's so many opinions out there. Father, we thank you for giving us the will to follow your lead. And we just ask for your protection in that as we go forward in this year, this new land Sabbath. We're beginning a new land Sabbath, Father. Help us to create a new beginning in this time. And just ask for your inspiration on the Midrash that we're going to have, on the teaching, on the, uh, our study into Exodus. Help us to 
see things that we hadn't seen before. That your name may be glorified in heaven and on earth. Amen. Amen. So yeah, we're going to do the the portions uh, for this day, which you know some of you may have done it last night at the Passover meal, and uh, Randy and I tried to do it, and we got every time we got going, we got sidetracked into something else. So did you look at this? Have you looked at that? And uh, so we're going to go through it and finish it today. So Kurt, I believe you're the first reader. Is that right? You're going to do Exodus yes, chapter I one. am. Let me get in a position where I can do that. Um, we've got too many microphones in this house and too many speakers right now. Come, okay. come in the room and come sit and do it. Okay. Exodus 4. And Moses answered and said, But behold, they will not believe me, nor hearken unto my voice, for they will say, Jehovah has not appeared unto thee and Jehovah said unto him what is that in your hand and he said a rod and he said cast it on the ground and he cast it on the ground and it became a serpent and Moses fled from before it and Jehovah said unto Moses put forth thine hand and take it by the tail and he put forth his hand and caught it and it became a rod in his hand that they may believe that Jehovah, God of their fathers, and the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, hath appeared unto thee. And Jehovah said furthermore unto him, Put now thy hand into thy bosom. And he put his hand into his bosom. And when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous as snow. And he said, Put thine hand into thy bosom again. And he put his hand into his bosom again, and plucked it out of his bosom. And behold, it was turned again as his other flesh. And it became, and it shall come to pass, if they will not believe thee, neither hearken to the voice of the first sign, that they will believe the voice of the latter sign. And it shall come to pass, if they will not believe also these two signs, neither hearken unto thy voice, that thou shalt take of the water of the river and pour it upon the dry land. And the land which thou, and the water which thou takest out of the river shall become blood upon the dry land. And Moses said unto Jehovah, O my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither here heretofore, nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant, but I am slow of speech and of a slow tongue. And Jehovah said unto him, Who hath made man's mouth? Or who maketh the dumb or death and the seeing or the blind? Have not I, Jehovah? Now therefore go, and I will be with thy mouth and teach thee what thou shalt say. And he said, O oh my Lord, send, I pray thee, by the hand of him whom thou wilt send. And the anger of Jehovah was kindled against Moses. And he said, Is not Aaron the Levite your brother? I know that he can speak well. And also, behold, he cometh forth to meet thee. And when he seeth thee, he will be glad in his heart. And thou shalt speak unto him and put words in his mouth. And I will be with thy mouth and with his mouth. And will teach you what ye shall do. And he shall be thy spokesman unto the people, and he shall be even as he shall be to thee instead of a mouth, and thou shalt be to him instead of God. And thou shalt take this rod into thy hand, wherewith thou shalt do signs. And Moses went and returned to Jethro, his father-in-law, and said unto him, Let me go, I pray thee. And return unto my brethren which are in Egypt, and see whether they be alive. And Jethro said to Moses, Go in peace. And Jehovah said unto Moses in Midian, Go, return into Egypt, for all the men that are dead which sought thy life. And Moses took his wife and his sons, and set them upon an ass, 
and he returned to the land of Egypt. And Moses took the rod of God in his hand, and Jehovah said unto Moses, When thou goest to return unto Egypt, see that thou do all these wonders before Pharaoh, which I have put in thine hand. But I will harden his heart, that he shall not let the people go. And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, Thus saith Jehovah, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. And I say unto thee, Let my son go, that he may serve thee, see, serve me. And if thou refuse him to let him go, behold, I will slay thy son, even thy firstborn. And it came to pass, by the way, in the inn, that Jehovah met him and sought to kill him. Then Zipporah took a sharp stone and cut off the foreskin of her son and cast it at his feet and said, Surely a bloody husband art thou to me. So he let him go. Then she said, A bloody husband thou art because of the circumcision. And Jehovah said unto Aaron, Go into the wilderness to meet Moses. And he went. And he met in the mount of God and kissed him. And Moses told Aaron all the words of Jehovah who had sent him and all the signs which he had commanded him. And Moses and Aaron went and gathered together all the elders of the children of Israel. And Aaron spoke all the, all the words which Jehovah had spoken unto Moses and did the signs in the sight of the people. And the people believed. And when they heard that Jehovah had visited the children of Israel and that he looked upon their affliction, and they, then they bowed their heads and worshipped. Okay. Thank you, Kurt. Uh, we're not going to midrash this very much. We're going to do that during the year as we read it, the, the portion later on. There's a bunch of good stuff in here we could probably, probably spend two hours on, but we don't have time for all that because we want to read through the, this whole portion today and get it done this morning, because we got a different thing to do this afternoon. So we have our second reader is going to be Belgique, and he's going to be reading chapter, uh, no, Bree, sorry. Bree's going to be reading chapter five. Okay, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay, chapter five. And afterwards, Moshe and Aaron went in and said to Pharaoh, Thus said Yahweh Elohim of Israel, Let my people go, so that they celebrate a festival to me in the wilderness. And Pharaoh said, Who is Yahweh, that I should obey his voice to let Israel go? I do not know Yahweh, nor am I going to let Israel know, go. And they said, <clears throat> the Elohim of the Hebrews has met with us. Please, let us go three days' journey into the wilderness and slaughter to Yahweh our Elohim, lest he fall upon us with pestilence or with a sword. But the sovereign of Mitzrayim said to them, Moshe and Aaron, why do you take the people from their work? Get back to your burdens. And Pharaoh said, see, the people of the land are many now, and you make them cease from their burdens. And the same day, Pharaoh commanded the slave drivers of the people and their foremen, saying, You are no longer to give the people straw to make bricks as before. Let them go and scatter straw for themselves. And lay on them the required amount of bricks which they made before. Do not diminish it. For they are idle. That is why they cry out, saying, Let us go and slaughter to our Elohim. Let more work be laid on the men, so that they labor in it, and not pay attention to words of falsehood. And the slave drivers of the people and their foremen went out and spoke to the people, saying, Thus said Pharaoh, I do not give you straw. Go, take straw for yourselves wherever you find it, for your work shall not be diminished. And the people were scattered in all the land of Mitzrayim, 
to gather stubble for straw. And the slave drivers were hurrying them on, saying, Fulfill your actions, your daily matters, as when there was straw. Also the foremen of the children of Israel, whom Pharaoh's slave drivers had set over them, were struck and were asked, Why have you not fulfilled your law in making bricks both yesterday and today as before? And the foremen of the children of Israel came and cried out to Pharaoh, saying, Why do you treat your servants this way? There is no straw given to your servants, and they say to us, Make bricks. And see, your servants are struck, but your own people are at fault. <clears throat> but he said, You are idle. You are idle. That is why you say, Let us go and slaughter to Yahweh. So now go, work, and straw is not given to you, but deliver the amount of bricks. And the foremen of the children of Israel saw that they were in trouble after it was said, You are not to diminish your daily amount of bricks. And when they came out from Pharaoh, they met Moshe and Aaron, who stood there to meet them. And they said to them, Let Yahweh look on you and judge because you have made us loathsome in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of his servants to give a sword in their hand to kill us. And Moshe returned to Yahweh and said, Yahweh, why have you done evil to this people? Why did you send me? For ever since I came to Pharaoh to speak in your name, he has done evil to his people. And you have not delivered your people at all. Thank you, Bree. Um, I just want to remind y'all, as we're reading this, we're not just reading something historical. We're reading something that's about to happen or is happening right now. It's prophetic to our time right now. So everything that you are reading in the Exodus story, why don't we read the Joshua account every year? Why don't we read the account of uh, Hezekiah every year? But we're commanded to read the Exodus every year. It's prophetic. It's something that's happening right now. You are a part of it, the same as they were a part of it then. They didn't know what was going on, but they were part of a major historic uh, event. And so are you today. We are repeating the same things. They're bigger. You don't recognize the names, but that's what's going on. So listen and learn what's happening right now on the news is what we're reading here. Um, chapter six, Baljeet. Baljeet, you got to turn your mic on. <clears throat> Belgit, are you there? Yes, yeah, so I'm okay. sorry I've got to turn it on. Then Yehovah said to Moses, Now you see, you shall see what I will do, Pharaoh. For with a strong hand he will let them go, and with a strong hand he will drive them out of his land. And, you know, and God spoke to Moses and said to him, I am Yehovah. I appeared to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob as God Almighty, but my name is Yehovah. I was not known to them. I'm also established by I also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan, the land of the pilgrimage, in which they were strangers and i have also heard the groaning of the children of israel whom the egyptians keep in bondage and i have remembered my covenant therefore say to the children of israel i am yahweh i will bring you out from under the burdens of the egyptians i will rescue you from the bondage and i will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great judgment 
I will take you as my people and I will be your Elohim. Then you shall know that I am Yehovah, your God, who brings you out from under the burdens of Egyptians. And I will bring you into the land which I saw to give to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And I will give it to you as a heritage. I am Yehovah. <clears throat> so, because... So Moses spoke thus to the children of Israel, but they did not heed Moses because of anguish of spirit and cruel bondage. And Yehovah spoke to Moses, saying, Go in, tell Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to let the children of Israel go out of this his land. And Moses spoke before Yehovah, saying, The children of Israel have not heeded me. How then shall Pharaoh heed me, for I am of uncircumcised lips. Then the then Yahweh spoke to Moses and Aaron, gave them a command for the children of Israel and for Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to bring the children out of Egypt. <clears throat> the family, uh, these are the heads of their fathers' houses, the sons of Reuben, the first one of Israel, where Anok, Palu, Azron, Er, and Karmi. These are the families of Reuben, and the sons of Salmon were Jemuel, Jamin, Ohad, Jekin, Zohar, and Shol, the son of Canaanite woman. These are the families of Simon. These are the names of the sons of Levi, according to the generation. Gershon, Kohat and Simon. These are the names of the sons of Levi according to their children. Gershon, Kohat, and Merari. And the years of the life of Levi were 137. The sons of Gershon were Lebani and uh, Shimi according to their families. And the sons of Kohat were Amram. Ezar, Hebron, and Uzel, and the years of the Kohat were 133. The sons of Rari were Mali and Mushi. Thus are the families of Levi according to their generations. Now Amram took for himself Jehobad for father's sister his father's sister as wife, and she bore him Aaron and Moses. And the years of the life of Amram were 137. The sons of Israel were Korah, Nepeg, and Zechari, and the sons of Uzel were Mishael, Elzebeth, and Zetri. Aaron took himself, Elisheba, daughter of I mean, uh, the sister of Nishon and is as wife, and she bore him Nadab, Abihu, Elazar, and Itmar. And the sons of Korah were Asir, Ekna, and Mabisha. These are the families of the Korahites. Elijah, Aaron's son, took for himself one of the daughters of Peter as wife, and she bore him. Phinehas, these are the heads of the fathers' houses of the Levites, according to the families. These are the same Aaron and Moses, to whom Jehovah said, Bring out the children of Israel from the land of Egypt, according to their armies. These are the ones who spoke to Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to bring out the children of Israel from Egypt. These are the same Moses. These are the same Moses and Aaron. Aaron, and it is, it came to pass on the day Yahuwah spoke to Moses in the land of Egypt, that, that Yahuwah spoke to Moses saying, I am Yahuwah, speak to Pharaoh, king of Egypt, all that I say to you. But Moses said before Yahweh, Behold, I am of uncircumcised lips, and how shall 
Parahid me. Amen. Thank you, Belji. Again, this is a very prophetic section here that we just read. Uh, it's actually a double prophecy. Holly <laughs> is going to reach chapter 7. Exodus 7 from the Sefer. And Jehovah said unto Moshe, See, I have made you an Elohim to Pharaoh, and Aaron your brother shall be your prophet. You shall speak all that I command you, and Aaron your brother shall speak unto Pharaoh, that he send the children of Israel out to his land. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart and multiply my signs and my wonders in the land of Mitzrayim. But Pharaoh shall not hearken unto you, that I may lay my hands upon Mitzrayim and bring forth my enemy, my armies, and my children, and my peep, sorry, and my people, the children of Israel, out of the land of Mitzrayim by great judgments. And the Mitzrayim shall know that I am Yehovah when I stretch forth my hand upon Mitzrayim and bring out the children of Israel from among them. And Moshe and Aaron did as Yehovah commanded them. So they did. And Moshe was fourscore years old and Aaron fourscore and three years old when they spoke unto Pharaoh. And Jehovah spoke unto Moshe and unto Aaron, saying, When Pharaoh shall speak unto you, saying, Show a miracle for you, then you shall say unto Aaron, Take your rod and cast it before Pharaoh, and it shall become a dragon. And Moshe and Aaron went in unto Pharaoh, and they did so as Jehovah had commanded. And Aaron cast down his rod before Pharaoh and before his servants, and it became a dragon. Then Pharaoh also called the wise men and the sorcerers, now the magicians of Mitzrayim. They also did in like manner with their enchantments. For they cast down every man his rod, and they became dragons. But Aaron's rod swallowed up their rods, and he hardened Pharaoh's heart that he hearkened not unto them as Jehovah had said. And Jehovah said unto Moshe, Pharaoh's heart is hardened. He refuses to let the people go. Let you unto Pharaoh in the morning. Lo, he goes out unto the water and you shall stand by the river brink against he come. And the rod was turned to a serpent. Shall you take in your hand? And you shall say unto him, Jehovah Elohim of the Hebrews has sent me unto you, saying, Let my people go, that they may serve me in the wilderness. And behold, hither to you would not hear. Thus says Jehovah, In this you shall know that I am Jehovah. Behold, I will smite with the rod that is in my hand upon the waters which are in the river and they shall be turned to blood. And the fish that is in the river shall die, and the river shall stink, and the Mitraim shall loathe to drink of the water of the river. And Jehovah spoke unto Moshe, Say unto Aaron, Take your rod and stretch out your hand upon the waters of Mitraim, upon their streams, upon their rivers, and upon their pod, ponds and upon all their pools of water, that they may become blood, and that there may be blood throughout all the land of Mitzrayim, both in vessels of wood and in vessels of stone. And Moshe and Aaron did so, as Jehovah commanded. And he lifted up the rod and smoked the waters that were in the river, in the sight of Pharaoh, and in the sight of his servants, and all the waters that were in the river were turned to blood. And the fish that was in the river died, and the river stank, and the Mitzrayim could not drink the water of the river, and there was blood throughout all the land of Mitzrayim. And the magicians of Mitzrayim did so with their enchantments, and Pharaoh's heart was hardened, neither, neither, neither did he hearken unto them, as Jehovah had said. And Pharaoh turned and went out of his house, neither did he set his heart to this also. 
and all the Mitzrayim dug round about the river for water to drink, for they could not drink of the river of the, for they could not drink of the water of the river, and seven days were fulfilled. After that, Jehovah had smitten the river. Thank you, Holly. I'm chewing off my tongue here today. There's so much I want to say. Susan D., you got chapter 8. Then Jehovah said to Moses, Go to Pharaoh and say to him, Thus says Jehovah, Let my people go, that they may serve me. But if you refuse to let them go, behold, I will smite your whole territory with frogs. And the Nile will swarm with frogs, which will come up and go into your house and into your bedroom and on your bed and into the houses of your servants and on your people and into your ovens and into your kneading bowls. So the frogs will come up on you and your people and all your servants. Then Jehovah said to Moses, Say to Aaron, stretch out your hand with your staff over the rivers, over the streams, and over the pools, and make frogs come up on the land of Egypt. So Aaron stretched out his hand over the waters of Egypt, and the frogs came up and covered the land of Egypt. And the magicians did the same with their secret arts, making frogs come up on the land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron and said, Entreat Jehovah that he remove the frogs from me and from my people, and I will let the people go, that they may sacrifice to Jehovah. And Moses said to Pharaoh, The honor is yours to tell me. When shall I entreat for you and your servants and your people that the frogs be destroyed from you and your houses, that they may be left only in the Nile? Then he said, Tomorrow. So he said, may it be according to your word that you may know that there is no one like Jehovah, our Elohim. And the frogs will depart from you and your houses and your servants and your people. They will be left only in the Nile. Then Moses and Aaron went out from Pharaoh and Moses cried to Jehovah concerning the frogs which he had inflicted upon Pharaoh. And Jehovah did according to the word of Moses, and the frogs died out of the houses, the courts, and the fields. So they piled them in heaps, and the land became fallow. But when Pharaoh saw that there was relief, he hardened his heart and did not listen to them, as Jehovah had said. Then Jehovah said to Moses, Say to Aaron, stretch out your staff and strike the dust of the earth that it may become gnats through all the land of Egypt. And they did so. And Aaron stretched out his hand with his staff and struck the dust of the earth. And there were gnats on man and beast. All the dust of the earth became gnats through all the land of Egypt. And the magicians tried with their secret arts to bring forth gnats, but they could not. So there were gnats on man and beast. Then the magician said to Pharaoh, This is the finger of Elohim. But Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he did not listen to them, as Jehovah had said. Now Jehovah said to Moses, Rise early in the morning and present yourself before Pharaoh as he comes out to the water, and say to him, Thus says Jehovah, Let my people go, that they may serve me. For if you will not let my people go, behold, I will send swarms of insects on you and on your servants and on your people and into your houses. And the houses of the Egyptians shall be full of swarms of insects and also the ground on which they dwell. But on that day, I will set apart the land of Goshen where my people are living so that no swarms of insects will be there in order that you may know that I, Jehovah, am in the midst of the land. And I will put a division between my people and your people. Tomorrow this sign shall occur. Then Jehovah did so, and there came great swarms of insects into the house of Pharaoh and the houses of his servants, and the land was laid waste because of the swarms of insects in all the land of Egypt. 
And Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron and said, Go, sacrifice to your Elohim within the land. But Moses said, It is not right to do so, for we shall sacrifice to Jehovah our Elohim what is an abomination to the Egyptians. If we sacrifice what is an abomination to the Egyptians before their eyes, will they not then stone us? We must go three days' journey into the wilderness and sacrifice to Jehovah our Elohim as he commands us. And Pharaoh said, I will let you go, that you may sacrifice to Jehovah your God in the wilderness. Only you shall not go very far away. Make supplication for me. Then Moses said, Behold, I am going out from you, and I shall make supplication to Jehovah, that the swarms of insects may depart from Pharaoh, from his servants, and from his people tomorrow. Only do not let Pharaoh deal deceitfully again, and not letting the people go to sacrifice to Jehovah. So Moses went out from Pharaoh and made supplication to Jehovah. And Jehovah did as Moses asked, and removed the swarms of insects from Pharaoh for his servants and from his people. Not one remained, but Pharaoh hardened his heart this time also, and he did not let the people go. Thank you, Susan. And we're going to, going to go on with chapter nine and Glenn. Yes. Chapter nine, out of hallelujah scriptures. <clears throat> Excuse me. And Jehovah said to Moshe, go into Pharaoh and speak to him. Thus said the Jehovah Elohim of the Hebrews, let my people go so that they may serve me. For if you refuse to let them go and still hold them, see the hand of Jehovah is on your livestock, in the field, on the horses, on the donkeys, on the camels, on the cattle, and on the sheep a very grievous pestilence. And Jehovah shall separate between the livestock of Israel and the livestock of Mitzrayim, and let no matter die of all that belongs to the children of Israel. And Jehovah made an appointed time, saying, Tomorrow Jehovah is going to do this word in the land. And Jehovah did this word on the next day, and at all the livestock of Mitzrayim died, but of the livestock of the children of Israel, not one died. And then Pharaoh sent, and see, not even one of the livestock of the Israelites was dead, but the heart of Pharaoh was hardened, and he did not let the people go. And Jehovah said to Moshe and Aaron, fill your hands with ashes from a furnace and let them Moshe scatter it toward the heavens before the eyes of Pharaoh, and it shall become the fine dust in all the land of Mitzrayim, and it shall cause boils that break out in sores on man and beast in all the land of Mitzrayim. So they took ashes from the furnace and stood before Pharaoh, and Moshe scattered them towards the heavens, and they caused boils breaking out in sores on man and beast. And the magicians were unable to stand before Moshe because of the boils, for the boils were on the magicians and on all the Mitzrites. But Jehovah had hardened the heart of Pharaoh, and he did not listen to them, as Jehovah had said to Moshe. And Jehovah said to Moshe, rise early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh and say to him, thus said Jehovah Elohim of the Hebrews, let my people go so that they may serve me. For all this time, I am sending all my plagues unto your heart and on your servants and on your people, so that you know that there is no one like me in all the earth. Now, if I had stretched out my hand and struck you and your people with pestilence, then you would have been out, uh, cut off from the earth. And for this reason, I have raised you up in order to show you my power and in order to declare my name in all the earth. 
and you shall exalt yourself against my people in that you do not let them go. You, shall, you, should, you still exalt yourself against my people in that you do not let them go. See, tomorrow, about this time, I am causing very heavy hail to rain down, such as has not been in Mitzrayim from the day of its founding until now. And now, send, bring your livestock to safety and all that you have in the field, for the hail shall come down on every man and every beast which is found in the land and is not brought home, and they shall die. Those among the servants of Pharaoh who re revered the word of Jehovah made their servants and livestock flee to the houses. But those who did not lay their heart on the word of Jehovah left their servants and livestock in the field. Then Jehovah said to Moshe, stretch out your hand toward the, the heavens and let there be hail in all the land of Mitzrayim on man, on beast, on every plant of the field throughout the land of Mitzrayim. Then Moshe stretched out his rod toward the heavens, and Jehovah sent thunder and hail, and fire came down to the earth, and Jehovah rained hail on the land of Mitzrayim. Thus, they came to be hail and fire flashing continually in the midst of the hail, very heavy, such as had not been not had not been in all the land of Mitzrayim since it became a nation. All the hail smote in all the land of Mitzrayim, all that was in the field, both man and beast. And the hail smote every plant of the field and broke every tree of the field. Only in the land of Goshen, where the children of Israel were, there was no hail. Pharaoh then sent and called for Moshe and for Aaron and said to them, I have sinned this time. Jehovah is righteous, and my people and I are wicked. Pray to Jehovah, for there has been enough of, of the thunder and hail of Elohim, and I am letting you go so that you stay no longer. And Moshe said to him, As soon as I go out of the city, let me spread out my hands to Jehovah. Let the thunder cease and the hail be no more so that you know that the earth belongs to Jehovah. But as for you and your servants, I know that you do not yet fear before Jehovah Elohim. And the flax and the barley were smitten, for the barley was in the head and the flax was in bud. But the wheat and the spelt were not smitten, for they were late crops. And Moshe went out of the city from Pharaoh and spread out the, his hands to Jehovah and the thunder and the hail ceased and the rain was not poured on the earth and Pharaoh saw that the rain had and the hail and the thunder had ceased and yet he sinned again and he hardened his heart he and his servants and the heart of Pharaoh was hardened and he did not let the children of Israel go as Jehovah had said through Moshe can't help but think that Glenn really wanted to read this chapter on purpose. <laughs> it does fit, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, I don't think he, this wasn't, is this random or did he, chapter 931, I just hear Glenn saying that all the time. Randy gave it to me. It's Randy. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. Okay, chapter 10. And just, uh, again, everything that you guys read, all these curses are happening right now or are about to happen right now. And you need to be aware of them. You need to understand what they are, who is Jehovah attacking. And he's going to be attacking those same gods today who have different names. And you're reading about it here. We're already watching the one about the blood starting to take place. So be aware. Randy, chapter 10. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. And Jehovah said to Moses, Go in to Pharaoh, for I have hardened his heart in the heart of his servants, so that I might show these my signs before him. And so that you may tell in the ears of your son and the son's sons what things I have worked in Egypt and my signs which I have done among them, 
so that you may know that I am Jehovah. And Moses and Aaron came into Pharaoh and said to him, So says Jehovah, the God of the Hebrews, How long will you refuse to humble yourself before me? Let my people go so that they may serve me. For if you refuse to let my people go, behold, tomorrow I will bring the locusts into your coast, and they shall cover the face of the land so that one cannot be able to see the earth, and they shall eat the rest of that which has escaped, which remains to you from the hail, and they shall eat every tree which grows for you out of the field. And they shall fill your houses and the houses of all your servants and the houses of all the Egyptians, which neither your fathers nor your father's fathers have seen since the day they were upon the earth until this day. And he turned himself and went out from Pharaoh. And Pharaoh's servants said to him, how long shall this man be a snare to us? Let the men go out so that they may serve Jehovah their God. Do, do you not yet know that Egypt is destroyed? And Moses and Aaron were brought again to Pharaoh. And he said to them, go, serve Jehovah your God. Who are the ones that shall go? And Moses said, we will go with our young and with our old, with our sons and with our daughters. We will go with our flocks and with our herds. For we must hold a feast to Jehovah. And he said to them, May Jehovah be with you as I send you and your little ones away. Watch out, for evil is before you. Not so. You men go now and serve Jehovah, for it is you who desired it. And they were driven out from Jehovah's presence. And Jehovah said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the land of Egypt for the locusts that they may come up upon the land of Egypt and eat every herb of the land, all that the hail has left. And Moses stretched forth his rod over the land of Egypt, and Jehovah brought an east wind upon the land all day and all the night. When it was morning, the east wind brought the locusts. And the locusts went up over the land of Egypt and rested all in the coasts, of Egypt, very numerous. Before them there were no such locusts as they, neither after them shall, such, shall be such. For they covered the face of the whole earth so that the land was darkened, and they ate every herb of the land and all the fruit of the trees which the hail had left. And there did not remain any green thing in the trees or in the herbs of the field throughout all the land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron in haste, and he said, I have sinned against Jehovah your God and against you. Now please forgive my sin only this once and pray to Jehovah your God that he may take away from me this death only. And he went out from Pharaoh and prayed to Jehovah, and Jehovah turned a mighty strong west wind which took away the locusts and threw them into the Red Sea. There did not remain one locust in all the coast of Egypt. But Jehovah hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he did not let the sons of Israel go. And Jehovah said to Moses, Stretch out your hand towards the heaven, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, so that one may, so that one may even feel the darkness. And Moses stretched forth his hands toward heaven, and there was a thick darkness in all the land of Egypt three days. They did not see one another, nor did any rise from his place for three days. But all of the sons of Israel had light in their dwellings. And Pharaoh called to Moses and said, You go serve Jehovah, only let your flocks and your herds be left. Let your little ones also go with you. And Moses said, you must give us also sacrifices and burnt offerings so that we may sacrifice to Jehovah our God. Our cattle also shall go with us. 
there shall not be a hoof left behind, for we must take from them to serve Jehovah our God. And we do not know with what we must serve Jehovah until we come there. But Jehovah hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he would not let them go. And Pharaoh said to him, Go away from me. Take heed to yourself. See my face no more. For in the day you see my face, you shall die. And Moses said, You have spoken well. I will never see your face again. Thank you, Randy. Yeah, we're doing very good. We're doing very good. Um, I've got seven o'clock. So that is telling me that it's 12 o'clock Eastern time. Is that right? That's correct. That's okay. Correct. Okay, we're doing good. So we got uh, three more to go, and we're going to finish that up, and then we're going to have a break. So Shane is up next, chapter 11. Yep. Jehovah said to Moses, Yet one plague more, and I will bring upon Pharaoh and upon Egypt. Afterward, he will let you go from here. When he lets you go, he will drive you away completely. Speak now in the hearing of the people that they ask every man of his neighbor and every woman of her neighbor for silver and gold jewelry. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Moreover, the man Moses was very great in the land of Egypt, in the sight of Pharaoh's servants and in the sight of, of the people. So Moses said, Thus says the Lord, About midnight I will go out in the midst of Egypt, and every firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die from the firstborn of Pharaoh, who sits on his throne, even to the firstborn of the slave girl, who is behind the handmill, and all the firstborn of the cattle. There shall be a great cry throughout all the land of Egypt, such as there has never been, nor ever will be again. But not a dog shall growl against any of the people of Israel, either man or beast, that you may know that the Lord makes a distinction between Egypt and Israel. And all these, your servants, shall come down to me and bow to, down to me, saying, Get out, you and all the people who follow you. And after that, I will go out. And he went out from Pharaoh in hot anger. Then the Lord said to Moses, Pharaoh will not listen to you, that my wonders may be multiplied in the land of Egypt. Moses and Aaron did all these wonders before Pharaoh. And the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he did not let the people of Israel go out of his land. Thank you, Shane. Um, Bree again is going to do chapter 12. Yes, chapter 12. And Yahweh spoke to Moshe and to Aaron in the land of Mitzrayim, saying, this new moon is the beginning of new moons for you. It is the first new moon of the year for you. Speak to all the congregation of Israel, saying, On the tenth day of this new moon, each one of them is to take for himself a lamb, according to the house of his father, a lamb for a household. And if the household is too small for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next to his house take it according to the number of the beings, according to each man's need to make your count for the lamb. Let the lamb be a perfect one, a year old male. Take it from the sheep or from the goats, and you shall keep it until the 14th day of the same new moon. Then all the assembly of the congregation of Israel shall slay it between the evenings. And they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and on the lintel of the houses where they eat it. And they shall eat the flesh on that night, roasted in fire, with unleavened bread and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. Do not eat it raw, nor boiled at all with water but roasted in fire, 
its head with its legs and its inward parts. Do not leave of it until morning. On what remains of it until morning, you are to burn with fire. And this is how you eat it, your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And you shall eat it in haste. It is the Pesach of Yahweh. And I shall pass through the land of Mitzrayim on that night, and shall strike all the firstborn in the land of Mitzrayim, both man and beast. And on all the mighty ones of Mitzrayim, I shall execute judgment. I am Yahweh. And the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I shall pass over you and let the plague not come on you to destroy you when I strike the land of Mitzrayim. And this day shall become to you a remembrance, and you shall celebrate it as a festival to Yahweh throughout your generations. Celebrate it as a festival, an everlasting law. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread, Indeed, on the first day you cause leaven to cease from your houses. For whoever eats leavened bread from the first day until the seventh day, that being shall be cut off from Israel. And on the first day is a set-apart gathering. And on the seventh day you have a set-apart gathering. No work at all is done on them. Only that which is eaten by every being, that alone is prepared by you. And you shall guard the festival of Mazot. For on this same day I brought your divisions out of the land of Mitzrayim. And you shall guard this day throughout your generations, an everlasting law. In the first month, on the fourteenth day of the new moon, in the evening, you shall eat unleavened bread until the 21st day of the new moon on the evening. For seven days, no leaven is to be found in your houses. For if anyone eats what is leavened, that same being shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel, whether sojourner or native of the land. Do not eat that which is leavened. In all your dwellings, you are to eat unleavened bread. And Moshe called for all the elders of Israel and said to them, Go out and take lambs for yourselves according to your clans and slay the Pesach. And you shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that is in the basin and strike the lintel and the two doorposts with the blood that is in the basin. And you, none of you shall go out of the door of this house until morning. And Yahweh shall pass on this, and Yahweh shall pass on to smite the Mitzrites, and see the blood on the lintel and on the do two doorposts. And Yahweh shall pass over the door and not allow the destroyer to come into your houses to smite you. And you shall guard this word as a law for you and your sons forever. And it shall be, when you come to the land which Yahweh gives you, as he promised, that you shall guard this service. And it shall be, when your children say to you, why does what does this service mean to you? Then you shall say, It is the Pesach, slaughtering of Yahweh, who possessed over the houses of the children of Israel in Mitzrayim when he smote the Mitzrites and delivered our households. And the people bowed their heads and did obeisance. And the children of Israel went away and did so. As Yahweh had commanded Moshe and Aaron, so they did. And it came to be at midnight that Yahweh struck all the firstborn in the land of Mitzrayim, from the firstborn of Pharaoh, who sat on the throne, to the firstborn of the captive, who was in the dungeon, 
and all the firstborn of livestock. And Pharaoh rose up in the night, he and all his servants and all the Mitzrites. And there was a great cry in Mitzrayim, for there was not a house where there was not a dead one. Then he called for Moshe and Aaron by night and said, Arise, go out from the midst of my people, both you and the children of Israel, and go, serve Yahweh as you have said. Take both your flocks and your herds as you have said, and go. Then you shall bless me too. And the Mitzrites were strong on the people to hasten to send them away out of the land. For they said, We are all dying. And the people took their dough before it was leavened, having their kneading bowls bound up in their garments on their shoulders. And the children of Israel had done according to the word of Moshe, and they had asked from the Mitzrites objects of silver and objects of gold and garments. And Yahweh gave the people favor in the eyes of the Mitzrites, so that they gave them what they asked, and they plundered the Mitzrites. And the children of Israel set out from Ramses to Sukkoth, about 600,000 men on foot, besides the little ones. And a mixed multitude went up with them too, also flocks and herds, very much livestock. And they baked unleavened cakes of the dough, which they had brought out of Mitzrayim, for it was not leavened, since they were driven out of Mitzrayim and had not been able to delay, nor had they prepared food for themselves. And the sojourn of the children of Israel who lived in Mitzrayim was 430 years. And it came to be at the end of the 430 years. On that same day, it came to be all, came to be that all the divisions of Yahweh went out from the land of Mitzrayim. It is a night of watches unto Yahweh for bringing them out of the land of Mitzrayim. This is that night of watches unto Yahweh for all the children of Israel throughout their generations. And Yahweh said to Moshe and Aaron, This is the law of the Pesach. No son of a stranger is to eat of it. But any servant a man has bought for silver. When you have circumcised him, then let him eat of it. A sojourner and a hired servant does not eat of it. It is eaten in one house. You are not to take any of the flesh outside the house, nor are you to break any bone of it. All the congregation of Israel are to perform it. And when a stranger sojourns with you and shall perform the Pesach to Yahweh, let all his males be circumcised, and then let him come near and perform it, and he shall be as a native of the land, but let no uncircumcised eat of it. There is one Torah for the native-born and for the stranger who sojourns among you. And all the children of Israel did as Yahweh commanded Moshe and Aaron, so they did. And it came to be on that same day that Yahweh brought the children of Israel out of the land of Mitzrayim, according to their divisions. Thank you, Bree. Was it there? Oh, okay. Okay. Now we're just looking for another blood moon, a third blood moon in a row here. Um, we had one Friday night, Saturday night, no, last night, Saturday night. So this will be the third one tonight. Um, we're just trying to watch for his boat to come up. Uh, I did, before we do go on to the last chapter we're going to read today, I want to, I want to point to, I got to point this two things out 
um, chapter 12, verse 15. Why are Randy and I over in Israel looking for the barley? And you shall eat unleavened bread seven days. Even the first day you shall put away leaven out of your houses. For whoever eats leavened bread from the first day until the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off from Israel. Okay, I'm not making this up. That's right there. Now go down to verse 19. Seven days there shall be no leaven found in your houses. For whoever eats that which is leavened, even that soul shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel among the aliens and among the natives of the land. Among the aliens and among the natives of the land. It's not just Israel. It's everyone. And that's why it's important to know when the seven days of unleavened bread are. If you don't know, what do you do? That's why we're here. And we're not here to cause trouble. We're not. <laughs> okay. Everywhere Joe goes causes trouble. What can I say? I'm not here to cause trouble. I'm here to try and obey. That's why we're here. And that's why it's important. You know, don't take Jehovah lightly. If he says he's going to cut you off from, from doing this, Take them serious. Okay. Chapter 13. Shana. Yes. Please. Yep. Adonai spoke to Moses saying, consecrate to me all the firstborn from every womb of Ben Yisrael, both men and animals. This is mine. Moses said to the people, remember this day on which you come out from Egypt, out of the house of bondage, whereby a strong hand Adonai brought you out from this place. No hamats may be eaten this day, this day in the month of Aviv, you are, you are going out. When Adonai brings you into the land of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites, which he swore to your fathers to give you a land flowing with milk and honey, you are to observe this service during this month. For seven days, you are to eat matzah, matzah and on the seventh day is to be a feast to Adonai. Matzah, matzah is to be eaten throughout the seven days seven days, with, and no hamat is to be seen among you, nor within any of your borders. You are to tell your sons on that day, saying, it is because of what Adonai did for me when I came out of Egypt. So it will be like a sign on your hand and a reminder between your eyes, so that the Torah of Adonai may be in your mouth. For with a strong hand, Adonai brought you out of Egypt. You are, you are to keep his ordinance as a moed from year to year. Now, when Adonai brings you into the land of the Canaanite and he swore to you and your fathers and gives it to you, you are to set it apart to Adonai, every firstborn from the womb, every first male animal you have will be Adonai's. Every firstborn donkey you are to redeem with a lamb. And if you do not redeem it, then you are to break its neck. But you are to redeem every firstborn male among your sons. So when your sons ask you in the times to come, what is this? Say to them, be a strong hand. Sorry, by a strong hand, Adonai brought us out from Egypt, the house of bondage. And when Pharaoh refused to let us go, Adonai slew all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both men and animals. So I sacrificed to Adonai all firstborn males, but I redeemed the firstborn of my sons. So what will be a, a, like a sign on your hand and like frontlets between your eyes for by a strong hand, Adonai, Adonai brought us out of Egypt. After Pharaoh had left the people, people go, God did not lead them along the road to the land of the Philistines, although that was nearby. For God said, the people might change their minds if they see war and return to Egypt. So God led the people around the way out of the wilderness to the Red Sea, to the Sea of Reeds. And Ben Yisrael went up out of the land of Egypt armed. Moses also took the bones of Joseph with him, for he had made Ben Yisrael swear an oath, saying, God will surely remember you, and then you are to carry my bones away with you. So they journeyed from Sukkoth and encamped in Etham, 
on the edge of the wilderness. Adam and I went before them in a pillar of cloud by day to lead the way and in a pillar of fire by night to give them light so that they could travel both day and night. The pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night never departed from the people. Thank you, Shana. So much here, so much here. And you guys are practicing that this year by faith. By faith, we kept Passover. Do we got barley? Shh, Brian, don't say nothing. Do we got barley? By faith, we kept Passover, whether we had barley or not. By faith, they followed Moses out. And then they started to grumble when he made a right hand turn at Ethan. <laughs> that, that's supposed to go down there. That's not getting out of Egypt. So with that, we should wrap up this morning's service. And it's, I think I'm looking at 1230 Eastern right now. We're going to come back in about an hour and we'll do the afternoon service. Um, again, we're going to be concentrating on Passover today and what this day means and going forward. And then next week or this weekend, we'll concentrate on the, the remainder of it. Uh, Stuart. Should I, is there anything else you need to say here, sir? Because you're in charge. <laughs> well, so I think the key is, um, do you want to start at 2 p.m. Eastern, Eastern Standard Time, which is an hour and 40 minutes from now? And what, what do you say? Um, I'm good either way, an hour, an hour and a half, or an hour and 40 minutes. I've got 7.20 right now on my watch here okay. in Israel. Um, so I think the key is that you had written that in your newsletter, so we can hold to that. And okay. during, so during the next hour and 40 minutes, do you want to leave the room open? We can leave the room open. Okay. Um, Randy, Randy screwed up here. Um, we plan for Shabbat. We plan for the Shabbat Passover meal. We plan for all that. We didn't plan for supper tonight because we thought we were going to go out and eat tonight. And then we realized, oh, no, we got to be here with you guys. So, so I'm blaming Randy for screwing up here. <laughs> takeout. There'll be takeout tonight. Yeah, go get some takeout. Well, that's what we're going to do, takeout. But we haven't figured out how to do the takeout yet. So anyway. Do they yeah, have DoorDash in Israel? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's all, it's all in Hebrew to us. Do you want me to pause the recording? Closing prayer. Okay. Well, uh, Glenn, can I call on you to do closing prayer sir, for us right now? Oh, sure, sure. Holy Father in heaven, creator of the universe, we are so grateful that you got us here today on your first day of unleavened bread. We look forward to knowing what you have held back on purpose to test us to see if we have faith. And we thank you for that. We know deep inside what's going to happen. And we look forward for you to reveal that to us. Hopefully today, whatever it is, it's up in your hands. And I know you'll reveal it before the 3rd of March. So we ask you to please bring us all back here in an hour and a half so we can get some more uh, worship for this day. And uh, again, we give you all praise and glory and honor. Ye Jehovah, how are you sure? Amen. 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 And if there's nothing else. Should we turn off the recording now? Um, hang on. What's, what's okay. this? Major. So we got a major accident on the road to Elat today. Uh, something big going on down there. It's at some sort of accident, though it's not an attack. Bunch of soldiers. And a um, bunch of soldiers, what? Were hurt because of the a, a, a bus driver had a heart attack and he ended up wrecking and crashing into a bunch of people. Oh, so no. we got a bunch of idea of soldiers that are injured from uh, the bus driver having a heart attack. Um, we've also had a bomb here in our neighborhood today. 
um, that they found and, and took care of. We have, when we were down looking for the, the barley um, yesterday, or, yeah, yesterday, we could hear the thump, thump, and the thump, thump of the uh, explosions going on. We're back up in Tel Aviv, and all day today, we can hear the concussions coming across the water to us. We are not left without knowing that there's something horrible going on um, not far from here. Uh, we see the, the military everywhere, and they are loved by everybody. They're just 20-year-old kids. Um, so keep them in your prayers and pray for the return of the hostages. Um, there's a lot going on here. And we're going to turn off the recording here in a moment. And then I'll play you the video explaining what we've done here in the last few days. Okay. Membership has its privileges. So you guys are going to get to see it first. You'll get to hear what's going on and you'll get to know. So it's going to be a half hour and uh, I'm going to play that right after we turn off this recording and then we'll come back after that in an hour's time. Okay. So Hoxamayak, everyone, this is the morning service. We'll be back in the afternoon. Thank you. 